Heavenly Father, we come before you very present, Lord God. And we lift up your name on high, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for the very breath of life, for allowing us to be here this morning, Father God, to hear your word, to receive your word. Father, I pray, Father, that the hearts of stone be made a heart of flesh, Father God, that I see my grab good room as they hear your word, Father God, that they might be well, Father God, that they might receive you as Lord and Savior, Father God, that your word, Father God, might be the very foundation which they stand upon, Lord God. I thank you for transforming and renewing them into your likeness, Father God. And I thank you that it's your kingdom, Father God, that we search after, Father God, that we perceive, Father God, that we move forward to, Father God. For you are, we are to be, Father God. So we thank you, Father God, even right now, Father God, your presence is here, your kingdom is here with us, Father God. Moving, Father God, mightily in our lives, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord this Sunday morning. Let me ask you to open your Bible, your Bible to Titus. It's right after 2 Timothy. New Testament, chapter 3, when you there, say amen. I think in Spanish is Titos. Titos. Amen. amen. That's right after 2 Timothy, 2 Timoteo. When you get to 2 Timothy, the next book. Titus chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Amen. Titus 3, verse 5, it says in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Be busy, see the please. Today I'm going to talk about salvation. Amen? Now it can be very weird to you because you're like, I'm saved. What do you need to talk about salvation? Well, we always need to talk about salvation because that's why he came for. Amen? He came to save you. So if it was important to him, it should be important to us. Amen? We should know what salvation is and what that salvation look like. Amen? Titus is mentioned four times in the New Testament. Paul writes to Titus. Titus is one of his two spiritual sons. The other one is Timothy. But Titus is a young man that Paul writes to. And Titus is, he, he's watching over a church. And so it occurs. And the people in the church start to think about the works they're doing and everything. Like many of us do when it comes to salvation. I want to share something with you. I've been pastoring for a while. And I have pastored in good health, I have pastored in bad health to the point of almost fainting and blood pressure high. And I remember one time I preached and my fever was very high. I had ammonia and flu and everything. I had preached with this place packed. I had preached with there was no one here. No one. Just me and my, and my family. Right? I had preached. I had been persecuted and told, don't preach the gospel by loved ones, by family members. I won't do all that time, so don't preach the gospel. Either. And I've continued to preach the gospel. I have been talked about, accused, and yet still kept going. Still kept preaching. And I say all that to say this, that all that doesn't add an ounce to salvation, doesn't do anything. For salvation. Salvation is given by God. It's the gift of God. And there's nothing you can do to add to it. Because if you think you can add to it, then you're saying that the finished work was not finished. Salvation is the finished work of Jesus Christ on that cross and what he did for you. And salvation is not something that you work towards. It's something that you receive. Amen? Amen. Because we can get so called up when we are Saved to think that we need to do. I do good works and I do what I do not for salvation, I do it because I'm saved. Because I love him. You understand? I'm not working towards it, I'm not doing this to get brownie points with Almighty God. Right? That's like me saying, I gotta get everything right before I receive him. That's 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 an act of moral, and you can't, it doesn't make sense. How many people said that? 
I go to church when everything is right. Then you don't need to go to church because everything's right. Right? I do everything I do not for salvation because I'm already saved. Well, I do it because I am saved. And I long for him. Right? So what is salvation? I want to help you today. I want to help you from being that, that I hope that I'm saved to knowing that I'm saved. I want you to be that Christian that knows and they are secure in their salvation in Christ Jesus. Amen? And I want to start telling you this because I, I need you to understand because there's many people that doubt their salvation. Have you ever doubted your salvation? Have you ever said, I wonder if I'm saved? Oh, I got news for you. I do it all the time. Right? And when I doubt, it doesn't mean that I'm not saved. Doubt to my soul is like pain to my body. It lets me know something is occurring, something something needs to be fixed. Amen. If I had, you know, though people are like, I'm saved, I know I'm saved, nothing's wrong. Like, Whoa. Slow so down because uh, you haven't ascended up to heaven yet. Until you go, there's something in you because we live in a falling nature. I want you to know that every, the Bible says that everyone, say everyone. everyone. That's you. That's you. Well, I'm saved. That's you. Has fallen short of the glory of God. Amen? And we are moving forward in this salvation. All right? Salvation doesn't mean that one time you receive Jesus, as you want to say, as many people say, just receive him. You confess with your mouth. That's true. You confess with your mouth, believe your heart that Christ has died for you, that he risen from the dead, that he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, you are saved. Yes, that's the start of salvation. Now we're going to move forward into it. Many people think they're saved because they wrote it one day on the back of the Bible. And they ask them, are you saved? I was saved to 2021 or whatever, however, you know, 1972, you know. And that's the day I was saved. But there's never been a transformation. We just read it by what? Renew edition. You Right? By the washing. Right? How many of you only took one shower all your life? <laughs> kind of disgusting. But we treat salvation like that. Well, I did, I got saved. Right? And nothing else changed. When someone is truly saved, that means that they believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. What he did on the cross was enough to bring him in. And now that you're in Christ, right? Because the Bible says if you are saved, you're in Christ. Now there has to be a transformation. That means that you cannot be the same. That means that as you draw closer to him, the light that he shines, the light that comes out of him, shines into your darkest areas. That's why the Bible says that light came into the world and the world cannot comprehend. Darkness does not comprehend the light. That's why when you receive him as Lord and Savior, you feel good, but all of a sudden, light comes in. The word comes in. How many of you ever experienced that? You receive him, you're joyful. Now the word of God comes thundering in, and you go like this, I don't like this. Amen. Because what's happening is that he's grabbing that heart of stone, and he's transforming it into a heart of flesh. Now there's challenges. We need to stop preaching this weak gospel that says, just receive him and everything is going to be okay and you're going to be fine and you will never have any problems, any trials, any tribulation, which is contrary to the word of God because God says, if they're persecuting me, they're going to persecute you. If they crucify me, they're going to crucify you. If I didn't escape this, you're not escaping this. We, we, we live in a world, and right now in Christianity, where no one wants to hear the truth. No one wants to be challenged. And everybody wants to accept everything. Don't challenge me. Just tell me that I'm saved, and I can continue living in the sin that I'm in, and it will be okay, because I received the Master and Savior, and I'm okay. And I can just go live my life somewhere just fine. Like many people believe. Where I received them, I don't need to go to church. I don't need to do Bible study. I don't need to pray. I don't need to read the word. I don't need to fellowship. What well, then you're not saved. You just felt a feeling that day. Because true salvation makes you change. True salvation goes deep into the heart of men and women and transforms them. 
right? The child, poor child science, don't, don't think that it's just by word because they got, they got kind of confused. Where if I'm doing for the Lord, I, then I'm, then I'm saved. Then I could brag because I do A, B, and C. He says, no, there's nothing you can do. Amen. That's going to get you higher points for him. You do that because you're saved. Hallelujah. I preach because I'm a transformed sinner. Mm -hmm. Renew and wash in the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Lord. Because I remember where I was. So I fight the good fight of faith. What is the good fight of faith? The good fight of faith is that I no longer want to be what I was. Amen. And when I'm drawn to it, there's a battle. Something occurs in me. Something turns in me. You know, if you're comfortable, Pastor, how do you know you're not saved? If you're comfortable among the sinners, right? And you, how many of you have your best friend that's not saved? Yeah. Right? Your best friend that's saved, right? If you're more comfortable around them than around, than around the saints, chances are you're really not saved. And I know I just pissed you off. <laughs> but what does life have to do? You understand? When you truly say there starts to be a transformation. That's why it goes around you go like this. You're no longer the same. You're changing. That gets you nervous. You go, no, no, I'm still the same. And you're not. You're renewed. You're washed. You're cleansed. You no longer are comfortable in darkness. Amen. So there's a trend. I'm not saying run from them. I'm not saying neglect them. I'm saying stand. Amen. 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 Right now, the enemy doesn't want to give. He doesn't want you to have friends. I'm not saying that. Christ had dinner with sinners but he didn't change his character he didn't change who he was in fact when they're acting he will expose the sin in love and go you know that's wrong don't do that and he would tell them stop doing it some of them would some of them would say okay and go away but he didn't change who he was Ask yourself, if, when you truly say, ask yourself, when you are a bind of people who are not saved, why do you laugh and joke so much and it kind of pulls you? And you're more comfortable around it, but you have such a hard time around the believers. You know why? Because there's a transformation that's occurring in you. Why? Because everyone in this place, if you are a believer, that means the light of Christ is shining in you. That means your sin nature is exposed to everybody. Not covered up. Let me say it again. When you're among believers and the life of Christ hits this place, everybody's sin is this That means your, your character, your nature, who you are, your nastiness, your rudeness, your dirty looks, is all exposed. I know everybody put a smile. No! <laughs> you! Right? That's why I ain't sharp as iron because I see the real you. Now, now Christ, right? The Savior of my soul goes like this. Love them. And it doesn't mean that you say because you love them. It means you love them because you're saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me say it again. You understand what that means? Yep. Pastor, I got to love them so I can be saved. No, I love them because I'm saved. Hallelujah. Because I remember where I came from. And it's not hidden. You're going to see my nasty nature. Why? Because this is a nasty state. It's in the bounds. But because I'm saying there's a transformation that's occurring, then when I see something that's not right within me, not within the other person, because I might see it in the other person, but it's, it's invoking something in me. <coughs> Salvation comes down the ring and goes like this change that. Take your medicine, which is the word of God, and don't take it halfway, take it all the way. That's why there's no transformation in the body of Christ because we do things halfway. You're half steppers. Right? It's like that person, you'll go to the doctor and the doctor tells you, take this medication. If you take this medication, how long, doctor? 30 days. 30 days? 30 days. You go, how about 15? <laughs> double the dose. Right? <laughs> Come on, said double the dose. A good doctor will if he knows you. But the chances are that you don't. Chances are that you, how many of you have started to take medication and you feel a little better after three days or four days and you go like this, I'm good, and you leave it there. And you got a medicine cabinet full of half medications. 
Right? Still carrying the sickness because you didn't deal with it. You didn't go through the full, full process of it. Right? Only to go back to the doctor and they'll have to go, did you take all the medication? And you go, well, no. And he goes, oh, okay. Let's start the whole thing all over again. Again? Yeah, because you didn't take it fully. Now you have to, and I have to add more time to you. If you want to get over the sickness, then take the full medicine. Take the full dose until the day that I prescribe it to. Hallelujah. It's the same thing with the gospel. It's the same thing with salvation. How long do I have to do this? And to sin is eradicated. And sin is only going to be eradicated in your life. It's already done to the finished work of Christ. Don't get me wrong. But it's done when he calls me home and I keep fighting the good fight. He goes, well done. Now you can be transformed because you kept fighting. You kept moving forward. You kept God. Why does the Bible tell you, guard your salvation with fear and trembling? If it cannot be taken or lost. The problem is that most of us just give our salvation away because any other thing rubs us the wrong way. You know how many people have come in and out of these doors that have heard the gospel, did not like the gospel, did not like the salvation, preaching, and they say, well, this is not according to what I want, and left. Because we live in a world that you want to have their ears tickled. But salvation is something so precious to us. It's a gift from God to us. You couldn't do anything to obtain it. You couldn't buy it. You couldn't work towards it. It is a gift from God to all who believe. When you're saved, there's something in you that changes. First of all, when you're saved, you believe in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. That means that you have confessed with your mouth. Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart that God has risen him from the dead. There's no, see, a person who's truly saved, there's no debate. There's no, let's see. There's no, what if. There's just, he has risen. But you weren't there. You didn't see him. I don't need to see him. I don't need to be there. I believe and I confess. Amen. End of discussion. I'm not debating this with you. I'm saved through what he did. Amen. And the spirit of God that abides in me testifies of that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's it. See, but some of us, we, we, we get scared to say that. If you're saying that should run through your mouth like drinking water. Or you believe in Jesus? Not only do I believe in Jesus, but I believe that he died for me, he rose from the dead, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. What's your problem? Well, that sounds mean. No, what's your problem? <laughs> Pastor, you too, I can't be like that. Well, get the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost built boldness in you. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm, ser I'm serious. If you got the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God, it, it compels, it moves me. Wait, you, you sound so mean. No, I'm passionate. He died for me. He rose for me. I'm saved. I'm not working my way up to heaven. I don't have to do three Hail Marys and put $50 in a basket. I'm saved. There's nothing that I can do. There's no sacrifice that I can make. He did it. He did it. That's a beautiful thing. When you're saved, that is evidence in your life. When you have true salvation, you don't have a problem repenting of your sin. And that is an act of God. That's, that's turning away from sin and turning towards God. Let me tell you something. When the light of Christ is in you, right? You can't get close to God without your, your, your flesh being eradicated, being, being stripped away. You know, how, you know how your skin has different levels? You ever go out doctor and you got a guy burn, he goes, you see the level one, or you got a second degree burn, or you got a third degree burn. You ever got a third degree burn? You ever got a second degree burn? It, got, it rips the skin right off? I have. It's like all meaty, and you look at it and you're like, wow. But everything is exposed. Right? Now, when you treat it, you gotta be careful because it's so easy, it can get contaminated. When we get close to God, 
It's impossible to get close to God without everything being stripped from you. You see, he wants you. Salvation is making you in the likeness of Christ. So you draw closer to him, right? And your sin nature starts to pull away because it cannot understand it. It doesn't like it. It wants to sin. Right? Father, how I, how you know you say I don't want to sin. I fight it. Do you sin? Yeah. <gasps> my story. You sin? Yeah, you sin. I sin. Just like you. Amen. What's the difference? You, does that mean you say? No, I am saved because when I do, something in me crumbles. It breaks and I go before his very feet and I go to his throne and I pound the payment and I say, I don't want to do this no more, Lord. Help me, Lord. Strengthen me, Lord. I don't want to be like this. I confess it and I move away from it. I don't dive into it. Because if I'm not saved, I, there's no need to confess. You know you when you weren't saved, you didn't confess nothing. You know when you did your evil thing for your friends, the opposite happened. You delight in it and took joy in it. You ever did something bad? Yep. <laughs> Anyone, do I have any, yes. any saved yeah, people that, that you understand? Yep. I used to do bad things and had delight in it. I planned it. I giggled. I was like, I can't wait to hurt this person. I can't wait to do this back. I would plan it out. That's how it's like my mind was. I'm going to do this. I was so evil that I would time it. I would watch the person. And time they going in and coming in, I'd be like, this person. And get to know whoever I was going to hurt so much. They'd be like, this person is having coffee at this time. And when this person walking home, I'm going to jump him. And I'm going to hurt him. And I'm going to laugh. Sin. Now, since I'm saved, when I want to hurt someone, I go to the throne room with God. He goes, hey, remember what you did. Remember how I forgave you. Remember the mercy I bestowed on you. Remember that I washed that from you. Remember that I cleansed that from you. Don't go back to it. It's pulling you, but fight it. You sin because you started planning in your head. Now repent. I'm sorry, Lord. I, I, I shouldn't have said that. I should not act like that. What do I do when I see this person that I really want to love him as you love yourself? What? Love me, your God, with all your heart, mind, and soul, and then love your neighbor as yourself. Oh, man. I don't want to hit myself. <laughs> now, I definitely don't want to have a sparring fight with you. So I need to treat this person with kindness. See, that's part of salvation. You start repenting. Right? You start confessing your sins to the Lord. Lord, I, I know I do this. I don't want to do this. Help me, Lord. Doesn't mean because you saved that you don't sin. That person who tells you they don't sin, is sin. That person that told you, I don't say I don't do nothing wrong. Run from them. <laughs> Run from them. Don't hang out with them because then you're going to get into that mindset where, no, we're good. We're, when people tell me, Pastor, you're good, I, I tremble. I always tell them the same thing. You know me, I'm going to say the same thing. I'm not good. But yes, you are. You do this and you do that. Nope, 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 nope. It's all him. Amen. If I do anything it's because of his mercy and his grace, apart from that, I won't even be speaking to you. There's nothing good in me. You're a good person. No. What you see that you call good is the Spirit of God that abides in me. Hallelujah. That leads me and guides me. That leads me and guides you. See, when you have salvation, you have a new heart. The old thing has passed away. Therefore, everything else is new. When you're saved, when you have salvation, when the enemy comes and accuses you, you go like this. No, I have an advocator. No, I have someone that speaks on my behalf. He washes. He redeemed me. He purified me. You, All your accusation is invalid. It doesn't matter what you say. I have a new heart. I might have thought like that. I might have spoken like that. But thank you for reminding me because that's part of my testimony. That what I was, I'm not no more. Yeah. I was lost, but now I'm found. I was a sinner, but now I'm redeemed. 
Why? Because I'm saved. And I don't forget that. So I guard my heart because I don't want it to be stony no more. I keep confessing my sin. I keep confessing with my mouth that he is Lord, he is Savior. And I have the Holy Ghost in me. When you are saved, the Bible says that the minute you confess him as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit comes and abides in you. You become the temple of the Holy Ghost. How beautiful is that? That a saved person has the Spirit of God abiding in them, walking with them, speaking with them, leading them. How do I know I say? Because I don't do the things I want to do. Because I have that, you know, that voice you people keep saying, it's that voice, that little voice. Pay attention to that voice because that voice speaks loud and that voice speaks truth. Amen. And that voice is not going to mislead you. His job is that he'll guide you into truth. He'll guide you in all the way you should go. That's what it says. I know I'm saved because the minute I do something wrong, it comes like a flood. When well, you did that? Anyone? That's how I know I got the Holy Spirit. It's like, how long do I have the Holy Spirit? When you do something wrong, do you say, oh, well, it is what it is? Or do you go, man? It's like you're having a conversation by yourself. You're like, what? I'm sorry. You know how many times I say I'm sorry during the day? <coughs> I'm sorry. I should uh, uh, I should just let that person cut me off, not yeah. race with him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an aggressive driver. If you cut me off, it takes only the spirit of God to pump the brakes on me someday because I'm like, I want to go for the chase. I'm like, how dare you cut me off? You know who I am? <laughs> that That's... But since, since I have the Holy Ghost in me, he's saying, he goes like this, what are you angry about? What are you upset about? So they cut you off. They're going to go to the same red light you're going to. Calm down. And it always happens. I get to the same side. He goes, don't look at them. Don't look at them. Because I want to look at them like, you know, my sarcastic look. And just stay looking at them. You know I'm speaking truth because we all do that. There's not one person here goes, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm saying because I have the Holy Spirit in me. And he tells me, don't do that. Humble yourself. Don't think higher of yourself. Don't think you're better than anyone. Amen. Because the same hell that I'm putting you out of, I'm pulling them out of. Amen. And you yet have not touched my kingdom yet. You yet haven't received that transformed body that's waiting for you. Calm down. You're in the process of it. And that takes work. And not that you're going to get there by work, but I'm doing the work in you. And look how long it's taking you. And look how easy you go back to that. So relax. And I go, okay. He's like, breathe. You're turning red. You're going to pass. Breathe. All right, Lord. Let me calm down. Yes, Holy Spirit. You're right. You don't lie to me. You want what's best for me. So you correct me. Hallelujah. Not just comfort, he corrects. Why are you like this? Why are you so angry? Why are you so mad? I'm mad because I want everything my way. But it's not your way, it's my way. It's not your path, it's my path. It's not your will, it's my will. And until we make that transformation, we're always going to be in trouble. When you start thinking, wait, is your will that's going to be done? Yes. Oh, that's, that's a law off my back. <laughs> because everything you do is good. Amen. You mean it's your yoke, not mine? Well, your yoke is light. So let me take your yoke so I can, I can move with ease. That's how I know I'm saying. He keeps reminding me of these things. That's how I know that, that's, that I have salvation. He's like, don't give it away. Don't surrender it. My son pay a high price for that. Why are you giving it away? And not giving it away as to, because we're supposed to give salvation to others. We're supposed to share salvation. You don't save no one, but you share salvation. Let me say that again. You save no one. Stop saying you save people. 
How many people you say, Pastor? None. None. He he did. How many people you? Well, I say I I. I'm in awe when people speak like that. Because it's about their kingdom. I know they're not saved. No, I, I, I bring them the gospel. I share with them. I correct them. I don't condemn them to hell. I Listen, let Christ, the light of Christ shine in you like you're shining for me. I pray for you, brother. I pray for you, sister. Come on now. Stop that. You know, but that's because the Holy Ghost teaches me how to speak, mm-hmm. teaches me how to deal with them. Mm-hmm. I know I'm saved because I don't have a problem sharing the gospel. Well, the Bible says, I'm not sharing the gospel for its power unto what? Unto those who believe. Mm-hmm. How many of you have a problem sharing the gospel? When you're saved, you don't have a problem sharing the gospel. You don't have a problem saying, No, I'm a firm believer in what the Word of God says. Oh, so you believe yep. that between man and woman? Yeah, I do. You believe that you should go to church? Absolutely. It says instruct your kid in the way you should go. Oh, you believe there's only one God? Uh, yes. Oh, you believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh? Absolutely. And I'm not ashamed of it. Oh, but you're a bunch of hypocrites. You join the club. But you guys always condemn. I don't condemn. The world already been condemned. I don't condemn you. Oh, Christ condemned me? No, he freed you. Who condemns you? Your sin. Your actions. Your fruit. But I don't. You don't want to be condemned? Stop sinning. Change. Turn away. Get closer to him. And he will help you and guide you. I know I say because I love to share the gospel to those who need to hear it. To those who need transformation. For those who are lost and needs to remember that there is a Savior that loves them just the way they are. And he comes to them just the way they are. Just the same way he came to you. Please remember the way you were when he first came to you. Do never, don't ever forget how you were when he came to you. When he came to you, you were not redeemed. You were not washed. You were in a sinful state. You were in a lost state. If he would have blew the trumpet, you would have went straight to hell. But yet, his mercy took you just the way you were and started washing you. Washing you. Remember what the verse said. There's a regeneration. There's a washing. Constantly. Constantly. That's why constantly I tell people, go back to the word. Go back to the word. There's a constant reason why we should keep reading the word of God. There's a constant reason why we should keep going to Bible study. Keep learning. Why? Because I read this Right? Then I read again. I go, that wasn't exposed to me. That wasn't told to me. Oh, my. I read the chapter eight times, and eight times it told me things keep revealing to me. Yeah, that's the washing and regeneration. Wash, wash, rinse, and repeat. Like we always say, wash, rinse, and repeat. How many times I ask that God to forgive me? I don't know. How many times you sin today? How many times you fall short? How many times you lose your temper? How many times you think you're better than someone? How many times you talk about someone? <laughs> I feel I feel like he has me in that old fashioned, you know, when they're wide with the ripples. My head hitting all the way. You stubborn kid. Learn. Learn. I'm like, okay, I got it. <laughs> Only for him to do it again. All right, let's go. One more time. Because it's a constant regeneration. It's a constant drawing closer to him. The more I draw closer to him, the more he exposes my sin nature. The more he shows me the real me. Do you understand what that means? When I'm saved, it's him shining his light on me, and he, his light reflects all who I am. And who I am is nasty. And I don't run from it. I cling to it. 
And I tell that light, that love of Christ, penetrate me. So when you pass through me, everything that's not holy leaves. And what's left is a holy man of God, a holy woman of God, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, washed by the blood of the Lamb. That's why I like being the brothers and sisters. You never know that when you're around people who don't serve God, everything's good. You're like, how's it going? Everything's good. How was your time? Everything's good. We don't talk about the bad things. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't talk about your shortcoming because yeah, we're all bad. We're all, we're in the same pot. When you're around brothers and sisters, I don't like being around a sister because she always calls me out. God tells her things. God tells her things. I don't like it. But he's doing it for a reason. He's doing it because your salvation is at stake. He's like, hey, knock it off. The sinners are not going to tell you that. The devil, you know what the devil is going to tell you? He'd be like, you're fine the way you are. You're fine the way you are. Join the club. Listen, look at it. We're, we're happy. We're partying. Everybody's drunk. Everybody's high. You can do whatever you want. Be whatever you want. Those Christian people, they always got something to say and pick, and you take it like, that's right, they're always picking on me. I don't say how to pass it, because God might give them a word of wisdom, and then, <gasps> you mean you might breathe? You mean the word of God might come in and cut that sin out? So you'd rather walk around in sickness and in death, as opposed to coming to the surgeon? Just Christ the Lord and him be real and go like this. Hey, knock this off. Your arrogance is pulling you further and further away from God. Your stubbornness is hindering you. Stop. Repent. Because salvation is of the Lord. He's working this out in you. I cannot understand how people say they're saved for 20 years and it's like they never knew him. They have Bible knowledge. They don't live not one word of it. You got to live this. This is not just memorization. This is, this word is, when the Bible says the word is alive, it's because it abides in you, it's alive. You can't be a follower of Christ and not change. There has to be transformation. There has to be washing. There has to be rejuvenation. You, you, you can't be a Christian for 45 years and still be the same person you were when you first walked in. You cannot. You can't not. There has to be some change in you. Let's say it again. There has to be change in you. How do I know I'm saved? I'm not what I used to be. I detest my vomit. I don't like going back to it. I don't wallow in it. I don't like it. That means that nasty attitude got to change. You mean I got to say hi to everybody? Yeah. <laughs> and that ain't fake. That's fake. Amen. <laughs> that, don't be that fake Christian. I don't like when I meet fake Christian and they give me that handshake. It's like it's like all flimsy and God bless you, brother. <laughs> <They're> going, <laughs> Oh, they're passing me, they're like, God bless you, Pastor. <laughs> yep. Which one, like, like, like if I slept with them or something. <laughs> if I owe them money or something. It's a saying, you know it's true. You do it. <laughs> Salvation moves me to go like this, brother. I love you no matter why. I love you no matter what. I'm here for you. I'm praying for you. We have disagreement, but that's not going to stop me. It's not going to stop me from praying for you. It's not going to stop me from praying for you and your family and your loved ones. It's not going to stop me from sending you a text. Where are you? I missed you. Why? Because the Bible calls us to be gathered together in one. I miss you. Come back to the fold. Where are you? If I offend you, then I'm sorry. Forgive me. Sometimes I don't know my attitude. My, it might escape me. Sometimes I'm oblivious. Sometimes I have so much on my mind that I don't even see who's next. If I offend you, forgive me. Because my salvation is not more important than yours. Because we're all in this together. 
Because he loves me. That means I love you. You understand? So I, I'm careful. I got it. I know everybody's looking at me like, I have to say hi to that person. That, yes. Yes. I got to go to that person and love that person. Yes. Can I talk to you about it? No. Can I speak to you? No. Deal with it. You got a problem? Converse. Why would you use, why would you get to heaven and God goes like this? Nope. You're not coming in. Why? But I thought I was saved. He goes, well, you weren't. Because you never treated that person the way I treated you. You never loved that person the way I loved you. You never forgave that person the way I forgave you. You harbored hatred in your heart. Jealousy in your heart. Envy in your heart. But you call yourself a Christian. I received you as one Savior when I was 19. He goes, you never did anything for me. Oh, you thought because you want fire one year, that that one year equals eternity? Come on now. Right? Because I hear all the time. I was, I'm, I'm saved. I did, and they rattle off everything they do. I do this and this for the Lord. I did this and this and that. In 1978, I was on fire for God. I built temples and I laid down floors and I preached the gospel. I'm like, oh, you're still doing that? No. Now I just have Jesus in my heart. And I know I'm going to get in a lot of trouble for that. But it's okay. Because they're not here anyway. I didn't, call, I didn't call to give you a smooth gospel. I was called to preach the word of God as it is. Amen. And the good father knows what to say. And the good father disciplines. He doesn't spare the rod. He disciplines so he can cut to the bone to the marrow so that you can live. So you're not caught up in this web of lies that's being preached out in the pulpits. If you feel condemned, then repent. It's that simple. Come to the throne room of God. Come to the cross. Receive salvation. Meaning be forgiven of your sins and move forward. And pick up that cross and follow him. That's what salvation is for me. Every day I pick up my cross and I start walking. I don't look to the left or to the right. I don't look to see who's watching me and who's not watching me. I don't need to see who, who's at my level, who's not at my level. I don't even care about that. I pick up my cross, I look at him, and I go, let's go one more time. Salvation one more time. Salvation is of the Lord. And I keep moving forward. And I keep moving forward. And I keep moving forward. And I guard it. And I don't give it away. I don't give it away. It costs them too much. It's a precious gift. You ever receive something that's so precious for you that you sleep with it? Or are you that person that when you get something, can you imagine? Have you, have you ever felt when you gave someone something that you worked for, that you struggled for, that you saved for? Have you ever saved for something, worked for something, struggled for something, to give it to someone? They go like this, eh. And you look at them like, Damn. do you know what it cost me? Do you know the overtime? Do you know what I had to sacrifice? Do you know that I didn't have lunch for three months to save up for this for you? And you're just gonna throw it away? So you see the person you give something? And you find that little kids do that. You give them something that it's so tr tr precious to them that they sleep with it. And you pass it and you go like this. Oh, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> That's what happened. When he gives us this gift of salvation, we ought to treasure it. Lord, you save me when I when I deserve help. When even my, my righteousness but a filthy rag to you? Well, thank you, Lord. Why would I give that away? In fact, you give it to me. I want to share it with the world. You can have this precious gift that God gave me. You can have your own precious gift of salvation. And he will freely give it to you. And it's not just say, okay, I receive my son and but now there's more. Come on, let's do this journey. It's going to be bumpy. It's going to be hard. 
It's going to be dark days. But I assure you, as the sun comes up, I assure you that my Redeemer lives. Amen. I'm saved. I mean, you can say, Pastor, I'm saved. <laughs> How many can say they're saved? Amen. You're either saved or you're not, people. Amen. And you think I'm tricking you. I'm not tricking you. You either know you're saved, <laughs> and if you don't, my Redeemer still lives. Amen. And just receive my soul and go like this. Oh, what about what someone else thinks? Who cares? Right. Ain't nobody going to rush for you on the day who, that he blows the trumpets. As much as you love the person next to you, not one of you, not one, and I love some of you real close, not one of you is going to step in front of me like this to him. I'll take his place. I, I got it. I, not one. Or you're going to be like, Yo, did he make it? He's going alone. And so we of people would be like, if he makes it, I make it. No, repent. <laughs> serious. <laughs> A vision is an individual thing. Like, I got it. I got it. God. <laughs> I tell people all the time, I'm going to walk in this man like fire and brimstone. I'm going to roll right in there. Why? Because I'm fighting all the way. I'm fighting all the way. My shoe is going to be banged up. My arm is going to be banged up. My helmet is going to be probably crooked, sideways. But <laughs> bless be God, I'm going to get there. Because one thing I know is I'm secure in my salvation. And I would do everything I could possibly do. Because he did his part. Now I'm going to do mine. Bless that. <laughs> See, some of you thought you weren't saved because you were going through things. No, you're saved. That's the assurance. That's him letting you know I'm working. I haven't stopped moving in you. But if you're that person and nothing bothers you and you're fine. Then, then you should question whether you're saved or not. Because when you're saved, God's light keeps revealing things to you. God's light keeps shining in. The closer you get to him, the more he shines in. Now, how many can say, Pastor, that's me, I'm saved, I'm saved. Now that I'm saved, I need more. Now that I'm saved, I, I need to work even harder. I need to pick up my cross. I was getting lazy. I was getting comfortable. I thought I did my work. I thought I got my little check marks and no, no, no. There's nothing I can do. It's going to add me closer. There's nothing I can do. He saved me, I'm saved. I need to be secure in that. I need to be confident in that. Not by works, but by renewing. I need to be Christ like. I was telling the man yesterday, we need to be Christ like. We need to resemble him in such a way that when people see us, they see Christ. The reason why people don't want to come to church is because what they see, they hate. The reason why your friend, you don't invite your friends to church is because you're not saved. When you say they see Christ in you and that attracts them. If they're not seeing Christ in you, then you have to question, are you saved? Because when you're saved, all the people see it and they long for it. Because we live in a dying world that needs a savior. And they want a savior. They just want the real thing. They want the real thing. I mean, I said, Pastor, that's me. I'm being transformed and renewed. Let's pray. Let's pray. You don't know Jesus as you're going to say it? Today's a good day. Today's a good day to receive him. To confess with your mouth that he is Lord, he is king, that he has risen. If you have and you're saved, and you're like, man, I thought that everything was supposed to be fine when I received them. No? Everything's going to be revealed. Everything's going to be exposed. Now, the Spirit of God that buys you is going to start working. If you were angry because that was the case, then now's a good time to repent and say, no, I'm sorry. I thought it was the enemy attacking me, but it's your light shining in, revealing that I need to change. That I need to be transformed and renewed. I need to renew my mind to the mind of Christ. Lord, give me strength. Help me, Holy Spirit. Guide me. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Let's pray because I feel like many people are in that state right now. But I'm going to pray for you that the Holy Ghost might move in you. 
Father, I lift up every man, woman, and child, Father God. In your name, Father God, in your precious name, Father God. First and foremost, Father God, for salvation. For salvation is of the Lord. I thank you that you have saved us. I thank you there was no man or woman that could do it, but you and you alone. I thank you that there's no other God that could do that, but you, Lord God. There's no other religion, but you, God, can save. I thank you for that salvation. For it's a precious gift, Father God, unto us, Lord God. Let us treasure it. Let us hold to it. Let us cling to it, Father God, like never before. Let us not give it away, Father God, but guard it, Father God, with fear and trembling, Lord God. But, Father, I also lift them up, Father God, that those who are saved, Father God, they had gotten confused and said that salvation means everything's okay, and they will blame you for the struggles and the tribulation, Father God, not recognizing, Father God, that you will reveal it to them, Father God, what needs to be taken out. Father, I pray for them that they might repent right now in the name of the Lord, Father God. As they come to you in repentance, Father God, give them strength to move forward, Father God. Guide them with your Holy Ghost, for there is a light unto our feet. Let your word shine in them, Father God. Let your spirit abide in them like never before, Father God. That they might start changing, Father God. That the more they confess, the more they change, Father God. The more they become into your likeness, Father God. Let them be in your likeness, Father God. From the very crown of their heads to the very soles of their feet, Father God. Let them resemble you in everything they do and everywhere they go, Father God. Let your spirit be upon them and in them, Father God. And move through them, Father God, in a mighty way, Father God. That those around them, Father God, might see you in them, Lord God. That that light that's attracting, Father God, that might attract, Father God, unsaved people to you, Lord God, because they are walking in salvation, Lord God. So I lift them up to your throne room, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And all the saints say, Amen. Amen. And the Lord bless you, guide you, and lead you today. God bless. Amen.